Louise Hay film, Hay interview, take one. Well, the simple part that most people don't understand is that every thought we think and every word we speak is creating our future. It's as though our thoughts go out into the universe and are accepted and brought back to us as experience. Uh -huh. Now that is a very simple thing, but most people don't get it. They don't understand it. They've never heard it before and they think it's ridiculous. But if you can really accept the fact that every time you think a thought and every time you speak a word, you are literally painting your future, uh, making your dinner, uh, whatever you want to call it, you are creating. And you're creating your own life. And this is simple, but it's not easy to accept. But once you accept it, then you can start deliberately creating what you want in your life. And you begin to be aware of what you don't want in your life and how you are contributing to it. Now I think this has been around forever, but for some reason in the last 20 years, the universe has wanted this to go out among all the people or all the people that are ready for it. See, most of us just think, 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 and we don't pay any attention to what we're thinking. We're just doing it. But that's a, something you need to train yourself to do. To begin to train yourself to be aware of what you're thinking. And, and one of the ways to do that is to periodically say to yourself, what am I thinking? Would I like this thought to create my life? Would I like to have the experience that this thought could bring to me? Now it takes a while to do that, but even if we could begin on the smallest level to be aware of our thinking, we can start to make changes. To begin with, you start by doing what we call doing affirmations, and that is making positive statements about your life that are positive, and you do them deliberately. You might do them in the morning, you might do them at noon, you might do them at night, uh, you might do them you know, twice a day or, or whatever. But you do this and you let this become a habit. And as you start to do them, things will begin to change, maybe on a very small level. I call it getting the green lights in the parking places. I mean, they're not huge things in your life, but it can be very nice when you get three green lights in a row and, and you're in a hurry. You know? yeah, yeah. Doing an affirmation is either writing it down, writing it on the wall or the mirror, or using a, 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 you know, just saying it. What I like people to do is to stand in front of a mirror and do their affirmations. Because there's something very powerful about looking in your own eyes and getting and accepting yourself or noticing that you reject yourself when you're saying something positive about yourself. So that would be a very beginning way to start. Say in the morning, you get up in the morning, you go to the mirror and this is a big one and it's hard for lots of people. But you look in the mirror and I say, and say, I love you. I really, really love you. And to begin with, that can be so hard for people because they think of all the things that they think are wrong with them. But if you can start your day saying that, it's very powerful. Remember, I'd like to think the universe is listening to everything you say and everything you think and saying, okay, you can get that. So then it starts to bring you in and bring things into you. And I know this sounds far-fetched, but it's amazing how it works. You, if you do a good general positive statement for yourself, the universe will figure out how to manifest that, how to bring that about in your life. So things could happen that you wouldn't expect at all, but they will happen. If you think of doing your positive affirmations, it's like planting a seed in the ground. It's not necessarily true at the moment, but it is something you want to have be true. So you put the seed in, and you, you, you plant a seed and you expect it to grow. Or you maybe plant three seeds just in case. You, you expect them to grow, and you don't wait two days and then dig in the earth and say, what's happening, what's happening? You expect that thing to grow because you know there's a law and a process, 
and the seed will grow if it is in the right soil and it has the right amount of moisture. Making it really a habit and doing it every day, uh, doing something every morning when you wake up, that's a really good time. And another good time is when you go to sleep at night. And, and gratitude works a lot. Uh, if just being grateful for everything. The more, I always say the universe loves gratitude. The more you're grateful for what the good is in your life, the more good you get to be grateful about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, if somebody gives you a present and you're, or gives me a present and I say, oh my God, I hate that color and it doesn't fit, and you know, that person will never give me another present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you say, oh, it's wonderful and thank you, I really adore it, it's great, that person is probably going to want to buy you a present every time they see something they think you would like. And it's like that with the universe. The universe loves gratitude. If you have very strong beliefs within you that you don't deserve good things in your life, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have that, then there can be delays. And sometimes people say, well, affirmations don't work. I've done them. But it, when they're doing, for instance, prosperity affirmations, and they've done some prosperity affirmations, and they say it doesn't work, nothing's happening. And I say, well, all right, how many prosperity affirmations did you do in a day? And they'll say three, probably. And they say, all right, how many poverty affirmations did you do this day? And that could be 300, depending on where you're coming from and what are, is running through your mind. See, I have this, uh, one of my thoughts about life is that only good lies before me. And I have been saying this for many years. So it doesn't really matter to me what happens in life, because I know it's going to be good. Well, there are lots of things you can do to help you become more conscious of what is going on. And because so many of our belief systems really are unconscious or subconscious, we're not aware of them. They're just things that were bred into us as we were children, uh, is to take a little time to figure out what they are. And I always say a really good exercise is to take a big sheet of paper and write on top of it, say, what I think about men. And then another one, what I think about women, what do I think about uh, money, what do I think about any subject you can think of. Uh, and just write all the things that come down, come out of your thoughts. And whether they sound good or not, just write them down. And I I I any one subject, if you just write them all down and then look at them and see how many are positive and how many are negative. And if you can take those negative ones and turn them around, make them into positive affirmations, then you can start clearing up what you believe about, say, money that is not positive for you and or, or is keeping you from bringing money in. Uh, and, and you can do that with lots of things in your life. So you can really begin to realize what you do believe about these things. So you can't change your thoughts if you don't know what your thoughts are. There is a law of thinking and we are beginning to learn about it. And it is like a computer. If you have this gorgeous computer put in front of you and you don't know what to do with it, it's a piece of junk. But if you learn the language of the computer, miracles happen. And that is what the law of thinking is. When you learn how it works, miracles happen. What you think and what you believe is what will come true for you. Your thoughts create your life. It's that simple. And when we can get that, we can make enormous changes. Well, I think it really starts with realizing that you don't love yourself, that most people don't. Most people feel they're not good enough, that they haven't done it right, they won't do it right, they'll never be enough, and they're definitely not lovable. And when we come from that space, it's very hard to create things for ourselves that are really good. So 
in the early days when I worked with people, I used to uh, fix this problem and fix that problem and you'd have this a health thing and we'd work on that and we'd work on this. And one day I discovered, much to my amazement, that if I would help people learn to love themselves, to really accept themselves as they are, we didn't have to work around problems because it was almost like a miracle. Everything seemed to fall away. It's a hard one for people because we're we grow up believing that we're not good enough and nothing is right. Uh, I remember lots of times I would ask people, well, what is really wrong with you? What have you done that is so terrible that you're not acceptable to yourself? And I never, ever, ever got an answer that made any sense. You know, they might say something like, well, I'm too fat. Well, so, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I th when you talk about loving yourself, a lot of people think that that's vanity, but it isn't really. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, that is narcissistic. But to really care for you and to acknowledge that you are an important being. It's almost like in the Bible they would say, uh, you recognize that you are a child of God, that therefore you are perfect. But even if you're not a biblical person, if you can recognize that you are a being that has self-worth, if you can really recognize your own worth, then you start to treat yourself differently. And I think that's what's so very important about loving yourself, is you stop beating yourself up, you stop making yourself wrong, you stop talking about how awful you are, and you stop saying things like, I'm really stupid and stuff, and you start to treat yourself with a certain amount of respect. And this makes an enormous difference because what you give out in life is what comes back to you. So if you're giving out a feeling of, I'm okay, I'm good enough as I am, and I am acceptable, and I love life, and I love me, and you start having gratitude for yourself and for life, then life treats you differently because you are having a different vibration that you're giving out and getting back. And that's when things really start to flow. Now, a lot of people don't realize it, but you have to practice. You just have to start it. And that's why I try to get people to do a lot of mirror work. If you look in the mirror, just simple things like looking in the mirror in your own eyes and say, I love you. I really, really love you. And it helps if you use your name, Louise, I love you. I really love you. It gets to that little child inside that has been rejected for so long and it breaks open sort of a, a dam or a, a door or whatever you want to call it and it's like little miracles start to happen lots of little good things happen and the universe loves grateful people the more grateful you are the more you get to be grateful about it's that simple life is really very simple we make it enormously complicated but it doesn't have to be. Everybody's on a journey from the time we're born till the time we leave. But when we go on a spiritual journey, it seems to be more conscious. And we begin to make conscious choices about life instead of just going on and getting up in the morning and doing our stuff and then going to bed. We begin to make conscious choices of our, our thoughts and our actions and even the foods we eat and things like that. And it's uh, putting your foot on the pathway one step at a time. And some of us do very devious journeys and we take lots of little side tracks and we don't get very far really. And some of us just c are very conscientious about it and go one step after another and go closer to our pathway, which is really, um, to me, I think enlightenment is letting go of all the things we believe that are not benefiting us, us in life or the barriers to our life, to the good things in life and to release them one by one and to think, I don't have to believe that anymore or do I want to believe that anymore and making a conscious choice. When we can understand that every single thing we believe has been a choice and it may or may not be true. It can be true for you and not for you because it's your belief system and your belief system and then I have my belief system. I say a lot. Uh, that may be true for you. It's not true for me. I may not say that out loud, 
but people are doing things or saying things, and I think that to myself a lot. And also, it has nothing to do with me. Whatever's going, that has nothing to do with me because I'm under the law of my own consciousness. This is my pathway, and you have your pathway, you have yours, everybody does. So we're, we're all on a journey, and I think the more conscientious we are about it and the more conscious choices we make, the better our journey is, or the easier, or the swifter, or the, we get more goodies, or we have better health, all that stuff. But when I was beginning to work with people in the early days, I paid very close attention to what people said. And it became a habit with me, and I still do. I listen to what people say more than, you know, the words they're using and everything. And I, so often I think, oh, if you just wouldn't use those words, if you just take those three words out of your vocabulary, because people use uh, negative words a lot, the same ones over and over again. Uh, yes, I, I hear words. What much words, more than other people. What words would you take out of the vocabulary? Well, should to begin with. That, that's a, a big one. <laughs> because it, every time you say should, you're making yourself wrong. Either you were wrong or you are wrong or you're going to be wrong. So take that one out completely. And just a lot of negative expressions that people use. I'm not good enough or this will never work or oh, it's a rotten day or, you know, there's just tons of expressions and we use them over and over again and they don't do us any good at all. Everybody's journey is individual because we start from different places. So we can't all be having the same journey. But I think we get, we all get certain ahas. And that's when we've sort of learned something. We say, oh, okay. And then if we can keep that, what we've learned and practice it, then we've made another step and we can move forward. Um, yes, it's a lifetime journey and we never stop learning. I'm 80 and I'm still learning. Though <laughs> 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 so the lessons are easier now than they used to be. I like to think of that when we start, we have all these boulders in front of us on our pathway. And we start to get the boulders out of the way. And you finally get to the point where it's gravel. And gravel you can handle, you know. And you can sweep gravel and you can do things. So. And then occasionally there's an old boulder. <laughs> Rolls back into your back. <laughs> you think, oh, I thought I, I thought I had that one, but not completely. And, and, you know, also I think that when we learn lessons, we think, oh, I've learned that one, it'll never happen again, I've done that, that's it. Well, how do you know you've done it unless it comes by once more and see how you react? Have you really learned it? Is it really nothing for you? Have you gone beyond that? Or are you going to go right back into the same old reaction? See, we're never wrong. That's what we need to learn that. We're, we're always doing the best we can with the understanding and awareness and knowledge we have at that moment. I have a very firm belief that only good lies before me. And with that belief, it doesn't matter what comes, because it'll be only good. And I want it to be new and different and exciting and, and uh, stuff. You know, I'm, I'm in my 80s now, and new things are happening. So let it, just let it, ha let it roll.